Hey guys. <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Rilo yep. Pilo, and I challenged him to a that. Coke Ra Rochambeau. I think we should call it challenge. Whoever loses in Rochambeau has to do the Mentos Coke challenge. So, you want to do this? I think no. we're gonna do best out of three. He said no. This wasn't my idea. Here we go. You want to do best out of three or just like yeah. straight up? One, two, three, shoot. Sure. Oh, we're gonna do best out of three. Okay. Oh, Wait. my bad, sorry. I'm okay, sorry. Starting the second one. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm doing it. Give me the. Oh, no, I'll drop it for you. Okay, fine. Oh, no. I don't know about this. What do I do? Oh, I just. Oh, what up, my nose? <laughs> now I can smell it. I was going, I was going, I was like, is it gonna happen? I was like, I don't know. Sorry, we got, we got two more. It's one nothing. It's one nothing, guys. It's one nothing. I'm feeling good about this one, though, guys. Right, like thunder and crash like lightning. That's what they say. I like that. Are you ready? No. Okay. <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah! Oh. You want to drop it in? Yeah. Are yeah, you I happy? Do. I do want to drop it in, actually. I do want to do that. Okay, open wide. Hold on. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it's so much. <laughs> It's a challenge. You're supposed to try to drink it. Yeah, I was even ready. Whew. That's tough. All right, one more. We're tied one one. Okay. This is the deal. This is the the championship round. This is this is an entirely mental game. Oh, for sure. Dude, my face is really sticky right now. Yeah. I like it. You've like drawn on your face. So this is like nothing. Oh, this is nothing. Yeah, try to drink it. Okay, okay, I'm ready this time. It's not that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's just like, it's so much that like, it expands your cheeks. It sucks. Feels good to be a winner, you know? It's coming out of my nose. Bye, guys. Bye. This is the weekend. It is the weekend, yes. I always called her SZA. SCA or SZA? Oh, I thought you said C. I'm and then, like, and then somebody's like, no, it's SZA. I'm like, that's dumb. I also, for a long time, I didn't know that Wale was Wale. So I called him Whale, Whale. for like a year. Like when, when that, when, uh, <laughs> when I'm a B. His song with uh, Lady Gaga was big, yeah, like I'm in 2011. Be, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a be that yeah, one. Yeah, that one. I was like, dude, that new whale song is fire. And my young life kids were like, you're an idiot. You're Actually, they didn't say that. They let me believe it was whale for a long time and just laugh at me. Uh -huh. And then like, told me. Hey guys, welcome to the weekend. Um, we're hey so guys. excited. Uh, whatever just happened before us was something. Um, right now, uh, we're gonna go into a time of worship. Yes, we are. Ch Chandler's been practicing, so he was gonna sing you guys a song real oh, quick. Hold on. Is it actually that? No. Kill. Um, we'll, we'll be back. Yeah, we'll go be back. Let's go to worship. We're we'll see you in yeah, we'll the afterwards. We'll see you in the afterwards. Hello. Welcome back. So glad to have you. Let's worship together, huh? Knowing there's a reason All my dreams come alive Life is for living With you I made my decision You lift me 
fill my eyes with wonder. Forever young in your love, this freedom's untainted with you. The moment is wasted. See the sun now bursting through the clouds, black and white. Turn the color all around, all is new in the Savior I have found. Is living now. This is living now. You lead the way, got you right beside me. In your love, I'm complete. There's nothing like living with you. This life you created. I truly see the sun now bursting through the clouds, black and white, turn the color all around, all is new, in the Savior I am found, this is living now. chains. I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom. He faithfully born. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. When death was arrested in my
A Savior displayed on a criminal's cross. Darkness rejoices, oh, heaven has lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hell. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made Father, we thank you that you have saved us from death. God, that sin no longer has a hold on us, God. That death no longer has a hold on us because, God, you rose from the dead. We're forever grateful for that. So, Father, we respond uh, with open hearts, God, with open minds, with open ears to what you have for us today. We love you. We praise you in your name. Amen. Hey, everyone. I hope you are doing well. I miss you so much. Today, I just want to tell you a little bit about my friends and how awesome they are. My friends are just so loving and so kind to me, and they know me so well. My friends also know that I love watermelon, as you can tell by this shirt. Um, if you know me, you know that I love, love watermelon. It tastes so good. I love it. Um, but my friends know me so well that they know that I love watermelon. And so oftentimes they'll get me things that have watermelon on them. Um, Jessie Garza, one of our leaders, she made me this watermelon necklace. One of my other friends got me a watermelon bracelet. Um, my friend bought me this shirt. And so my friends just know me and love me and care about me. And the way that they express that is through by giving me these gifts. I love these gifts. But I love even more that my friends know me and care about me enough to show that through the gifts that they give me. And I hope, as a friend, that I too can show this to my friends, that I can be loving and caring to my friends, know them so well um, that I can just be the best friend that I can be. And today we're going to be talking about how we can be a good friend, how you guys, um, how all of us can be good friends. So um, we're in the book of Job today, and as we've been talking about, Job has these friends who aren't really acting like the best friends, right? These friends are basically criticizing him and telling him all these things that he's doing wrong. And so we're going to be talking about Job chapter 12 today, and we're going to be talking about how um, we can be better friends. So we're going to be in Job chapter 12, verse 4. And Job says, I have become a mere laughingstock to my friends, though I called on God and he answered, a mere laughingstock, though righteous and blameless. So we're just going to be focusing on this portion of the chapter today. And Job is basically saying that he feels like his friends are just making fun of him. The people who are supposed to be there for him and care for him and love him are the people who are mocking him and criticizing him. 
And so today we're just going to be talking about two ways that we can be better friends. There's probably a million different ways that we can be a better friend, but today we're just going to be focusing on two ways. So the first way that we can be a better friend is we can be more empathetic. In Job's case, his friends were not very empathetic. They couldn't really speak to Job in a way that was loving or caring. They were basically criticizing Job. And so what empathy really is, is imagining what it would be like to be in another person's situation. So if their friends could really imagine what it's like to lose their family members or to lose their life savings, maybe they would have a little bit more love and compassion towards Job. So for us, say one of our friends' um, parents is going through a divorce and we've never been through a divorce, We might feel a little awkward trying to comfort them and love them because we don't really know what to say. But sometimes we can just try to imagine what it would be like to be in their situation and imagine what it would be like for our own parents to go through a divorce. What would you want to hear if that was happening to you? And for some people, they don't want to hear any advice. They don't want to hear their friends try to like make them feel better. They just need someone to talk to. And so for us as friends, we can express to our friends and um, we can show them love through even saying, hey, like, I love you and I don't know what to say right now, but I'm here for you and I want to show you that I care about you. And so that's just one way that we can be more caring and loving towards our friends. And I think the perfect example of being a great friend is Jesus, because Jesus is perfect and he doesn't make any mistakes. And so Jesus shows empathy towards um, his friends when his friend Lazarus dies, right? Um, As you guys know the story of Lazarus, Jesus ends up raising him from the dead. But before that, the shortest verse in the Bible is Jesus wept. And Jesus cries with the people because he feels the pain of what it's like to lose someone that he cares about. And so for us, we too can empathize with people when they're going through pain and suffering. A second thing that we can do to be a good friend is to speak truth and love. You might have heard this phrase before, especially being a Christian, but what that basically means is when you see someone making a mistake, um, when you see a Christian sinning or doing things that aren't appropriate, um, we can kind of correct them in a way that is loving. So instead of yelling at them, telling them they're wrong or they're dumb or they're stupid, we can approach them in a way that is loving and caring. So for example, if you have a friend who's maybe making inappropriate comments about someone, uh, maybe they're being um, mean about the way that someone looks or someone talks, we as a friend can tell them, hey, like I've noticed that you've been saying these things and As your friend, I want what's best for you. I want you to be the best person that you can be. And it can be really intimidating trying to correct our friends because a lot of times, I think for me, like I'm scared that they won't want to be my friend anymore if I speak truth into their life. But good friends will want you to speak that truth into your life. I know for me, like if I say something inappropriate or if I mess up in a sermon and I say something really offensive, I want someone to tell me and correct me so that I don't make that mistake again. And so we as Christians can speak truth and love to our friends. Jesus does this um, with his disciples. His disciples um, are arguing about who's going to be the best disciple or, or who Jesus likes the most. And Jesus just reminds them that the least will be the greatest. The person who humbles themselves will be the greatest of them. And so Jesus corrects them in a way that isn't hateful or spiteful, but he comes to them in a way that is loving because he wants what's best for them. And so I think it's just important for us to remember that no one's perfect. We all make mistakes. We all have sin in our heart, and we don't want to be... If I lie a lot and I'm telling someone not to lie and I'm not looking at my own heart and what my own mistakes are, it can be difficult for that person to listen to me, right? So we need to make sure that we are looking at our own sin and and knowing that we all make mistakes and that we all um, need Jesus in our lives, right? So in conclusion, um, just as we go through the season of life, that's pretty crazy, difficult, and um, we don't have people right next to us, um, I think it's important for us to be reaching out to our friends and just checking in on them, seeing how they're doing. And we can remember to be empathetic 
We can remember to speak truth and love if we see that they're making um, some bad decisions. And we can just overall care for our brothers and sisters in Christ. I love you guys, and I miss you, and I hope to see you soon. Bye. Who's ready for a war again? And I know. <laughs> oh, no, that's next. I'm ready for a war again. I don't want to be playing that. It's the same. Yep. Ready? Tell me why I'll save you for myself. I don't, I don't know this song. It's hard to fix all I know. Here we go. Oh, no. Yep. Don't save me from myself. It's the chorus. Cause no one kills me. Cause no one pray for me. Oh no. Hold on. It's kill for you. Nailed it. I would like the world to fight this to fight it myself. I don't know that. We gotta stop yeah, we that. can't. We <laughs> hey, so that was the weekend brought huh? to you by the weekend. Yeah, Get I it? hope because this is the weekend. That was really clever. I hope you enjoyed the Job series. My flashlight's on. Um, Job series isn't over. It's not over. I just hope you enjoyed that message by Kelsey. Kelsey, inspi- Kelsey, that was fire. What inspiring words? That that fired me up. Um, I thought that was. He's covering his flashlight for some reason. I turned it off. I don't know how I did it, but I did. Um, yeah, we're still in Job. Going to keep going. I want to say something, but I don't know what to say. I love and miss you guys. You say, no, I don't. Or you say, I don't. Hey! (sighs) There's something right on the tip of my tongue, and I can't figure it out. The tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. That's a, that's like a vocal warm up. Is it really? Yeah. Tip Mariah of the Carey does it. <laughs> Vocalist she, of a generation. She's not bom- this one. But. She's bombed. <laughs> she's bombed a few times. Well, yeah, now. When you but get even old, her you in fall. her time. And then you need life alert. You can't get back up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know that song. I get knocked down, but I, I get up again. Down. Unless you don't have life alert. Chumba Wumba. Yeah. Soundtrack to my life. But unless you're old. Then I get knocked down. I don't get up again. again. Cause I'm old and I fell down. My old job, I had to deal with a lot of life alerts. Starbucks. This is coffee shop. No, it wasn't the coffee shop.